The European Unitel Archive, ENA, is a data resource that provides comprehensive uh, capture, archiving and presentation of DNA and RNA sequence data um, across all sorts of different applications of, of sequencing uh, to all sorts of different users. The ENA is uh, provided by the EMBL European uh, Bioinformatics Institute, which is my institution, um, uh, alongside a number of other foundational databases for uh, the life sciences. And uh, Elixir, which is the coordinating uh, research infrastructure for life science data in Europe, um, holds amongst several others ENA as one of its core data resources. So ENA provides uh, comprehensive sequence data. So there are many different sequencing platforms, many different instrument manufacturers and machine manufacturers and machines, and many different ways of using those. So we we provide um, comprehensive uh, data content across the different platforms and across applications. People push their data into the system through a, a diversity of submission services that we offer. So these are websites, um, programmatic interfaces where people producing data can uh, synchronize their data into our system. And then we also have a global collaboration with partners in Asia and in the US, uh, the International Unitized Sequence Database Collaboration, with whom we exchange content on a regular basis. And so that way we assure that we have globally comprehensive content. So ENA has a, a portfolio of different uh, data access services ranging from discovery tools uh, through to uh, retrieval systems. Uh, these are available uh, through um, programmatic tools and, and also through some of the so tools that one can download and install locally in some cases, um, programmatic interfaces, RESTful interfaces and so on, and then websites. And, um, and of course, because we make the, available, the data available openly and freely, many people mirror the sites as well. So other people are providing services on these data too. Uh, but essentially one can come in and, and discover data sets of relevance, package those data sets, and then uh, download them or, or route them to appropriate computer infrastructure for further work. So I guess the most important aspect of, of the, the set of algorithms and processes that ENA uses on the data um, uh, is that these, these allow the data to be connected and integrated into a meaningful whole and then made available systematically through different services. And so the process of putting one's data into ENA is far more than a file share or a, a simple upload. What happens is the, the data provider goes through a process to structure and organize the data, run the data through validation to check the integrity of the data files themselves, to um, uh, be sure that the metadata layer, so the descriptors of the data, uh, the descriptors of the science that led to the generation of the data are, are structured and appropriate. Um, and then the job of uh, the, uh, the, the machine that is the, 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 the data processing of ENA is to uh, understand all of that, pull out relevant components and provide indexing and provide integration. And so if one wants to search for all data from a particular geographical region and package that into a, um, into a data set, one can do that because that's all been provided by the data providers and, and uh, processed and indexed on the ENA side. If one wants to search by taxonomic name, the name of a species, or one wants to search by some other metadata, or one wants to do a, 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 a sequence similarity search to look for a particular genetic feature, these things are all possible. And they're possible because we have this large machine that processes the data and provides the, the, the validation, the description, and the indexing. So ENA and its content is very much a foundation for many other things that happen. So ENA is a generalist service. We, we capture sequences from all, uh, all environments, including aquatic environments, including the sea, um, uh, but other environments as well. Um, and so being a foundation, often it is its value that is added by other parties and processes, analysis, curation, and so on that happens elsewhere that really brings the value to specific domains. But what we have in ENA is a, a broad um, and, and growing uh, content that cover uh, aquatic environments in general. Um, we work with uh, a number of projects very specifically to provide very rich data sets. So we work with Tara Oceans, the Tara Oceans Foundation, 
we work with Ocean Sampling Day. And the number of these um, uh, significant initiatives to uh, develop rich and deep uh, geographically spread and longitudinal data sets um, to have a very, a very good, solid and ongoing understanding of, of the life that occurs in different parts of the ocean. Um, so we have particular data sets and we work with the providers of these data sets really to enrich the, um, the marine content and the aquatic content in general. And then what this provides is a foundation layer for all sorts of different analysis, which may include the discovery, so the understanding of the fundamental biology of systems that of ecological and biological systems operating uh, within aquatic environments. It will involve understanding how communities, how, how living communities uh, respond to challenges like pollution, like climate change, uh, like um, uh, economic activity, trade and so on. Um, but then also it gives an opportunity to find new biology, new biochemistries that may be important outside the marine environment and perhaps healthcare uh, or perhaps elsewhere. So it has a whole load of potential uh, to provide uh, through this foundation very important impacts uh, into the blue economy in, in, in many, many different ways. So understanding any uh, complex system on, on our planet involves interdisciplinarity. It involves uh, not just data from one particular set of platforms, such as sequencing, but data from many other platforms. So if we really want to understand life in the oceans, we, we have to understand the, 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 the molecular biology, the sequences, so that's the job of ENA. But we need to understand the local oceanographic conditions, so we need oceanographic data. Um, we need to understand uh, climatic data. We need to understand how that, that marine region is being used. We need to know about shipping. We need to know about, uh, from an earth sensing perspective, remote sensing, we need to understand uh, uh, large scale patterns. So we really need to be able to understand all of these things and, and connect data from all of these different platforms to be able to, to, to have a, a full understanding of what's happening in the oceans and how living things are living in the oceans um, and to be able to build models and then to be able to project how, um, how these may change uh, under different challenges and under different influences over time and what aspects of those, um, those living systems uh, will be uh, insightful and important for us in the future. So ENA stands to benefit from, from uh, the Blue Cloud project uh, because the Blue Cloud project allows it to connect all these different data types and it allows scientists to access in an interdisciplinary way uh, all of these data for, for, for compute. So in the Plankton Genomics Demonstrator, the ENA is providing the, the source data. It's working with the data providers to make sure that the descriptions of the data, the, the, the environmental oceanographic context of the data are, uh, are captured. And then it's providing those data in a way that allows the, the demonstrator and the people working on the demonstrator to uh, pull out um, uh, individual or to try to identify individual organisms and signatures of organisms in the sequence uh, from different environments and then to correlate those, those signatures with uh, different environmental factors that, that are coming from these, these, these other data sources.